to the, the top table in no particular order. Nearest to me, obviously, uh, former Aberdeen captain, Evening Express columnist, and the last man to lift a trophy for Aberdeen Football Club when they won the Coca Cola Cup way back in '95. No, it doesn't seem that long now, but uh, I'll introduce you there, and it's Stuart McKimmy. Captain in the 80s, lifting the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1983, record appearances for the club, Aberdeen manager as well, and now the, the football director of the club, the one and only Willie Miller. <laughs> club record goal scorer, 205 goals for Aberdeen Football Club in competitive matches in the 70s, a Cup winner in 1970, a League Cup winner in 76, a League winner in 1980. Four cats for Scotland, when they've been Argentina, if you remember correctly. <laughs> uh, and of course, it's King Joey Harper. <laughs> For the last four years, I think we'd all agree he's brought stability to Aberdeen Football Club. He's certainly great for the press. Well, he craps up sometimes because he's a bit too open with us sometimes. But the man we're all hoping can lead us on to great success in the season ahead of us, the manager of Aberdeen Football Club, Jimmy Calderwood. somebody decent. By nobody's I don't mean, you know, any, any harm towards the players that will have signed, but I often think that Aberdeen don't have enough vision. Question. Um, why would we aiming for third instead of first or second? And that's why you know, we need decent players to do that. And why let people like Tizani and Lovell go that are quality players? You know, you talk about players, nobody's, and, and as you say, I mean, Mark Kerr was probably one of the best players at Dundee United last year, he's going to be one of your opponents. Well, grew has got all the quality to go and play for Scotland, if he wants. You know, he's a wee bit easy OG at the moment, and we need to get that out of him, but I think uh, he played at Celtic, he went down to Wills, it didn't work out for him. It's a problem position in world football, left back. It's a problem position for international squad. And it's been a problem position for us, although Richard Foster has done really well. And uh, I think mcgrew has got all the quality, if he wants it, and he's hungry enough to get into Scotland squad in that position. And so I don't think he'll be a nobody. It's just first and second. You know, uh, you're always striving to be the best. You know, but I think if you... It's, it's not a, a case of not having the ambition to be first. You always say that inside, but I think if you come out and say it uh, in Charlie's newspaper, you know, you, you set the standards and supporters, and, and if you and if finish second, then it's not good enough. You know, if you see the players that's left this club that we didn't want to leave, let leave the Hakenins and McNaughtons and the Andersons and the Clarks and the Harps and the Nicholsons, if we'd have kept all them, I think I'd have a much better chance to come out and saying, yeah, we're going to go for second to first. But the English clubs, and it's, it's great to be part of it. Hopefully, you know, the boys appreciate it and, and they've had a wonderful breeding ground at Aberdeen. But once them boys start coming in, the English boys, we've got no chance. Not a hope. When will Jimmy Calderwood uh, get decent money to spend on players? Jimmy gets decent money to spend on players. Um, I, I think uh, it's been well publicised that since joining the club, since I came back, and uh, appointed Jimmy, <coughs> that the, the, the budget has actually been increased as we stand by a million pounds a year. If someone can tell me where we can get that money from to give Jimmy more, then I'm only too willing to listen, uh, to give him more to go out and spend. Have you been out knocking on doors, Willie? No, I don't knock on doors, you should know that. Well, I think you should. No, well, I disagree with you. Well, I'll tell you the reason I think you should, because, you know, you can well, say... it's not my job. You can Joe, my job, my job yeah. here, if you listen to me, then I'll, I'll give you my job here is to help uh, Jimmy to support uh, his football plan, uh, to uh, try and work with the board of directors to bring in as much money as we possibly can, and we've done that, to the extent that it's £1 million more this year. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if you, go, if you in, were to knock on the door of the president or the chairman of some of the big oil companies, they would rather speak to Wally Miller, the legend, than speak to Angela. Yeah, but that's no Angela's, disrespect to Angela. That's Angela's job, Joe. My job is director of football. My job is to support the football element of the club. You've got a commercial department that goes out and does their work. And they're commercial people. 
You leave it to yeah, the professional to a certain, people. To a certain I speak level. I, I don't understand where you're coming from. Would you want me to go out and and, and yeah, no, chat in doors? No, and, I want you to phone like up people in big oil companies and say, could I have a, a meeting with you? Could I have a lunch with you? But we and do just that. sit and talk to them. We do that. I'll ask you that. I don't go and chat doors. You didn't. You <laughs> said, did you go and chat? Did you say go and chat doors? Are you going to get pernickety about it? No, but you said go out and chat doors. I'm not going to go and chat doors. You didn't. You asked me to chat doors. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to chat doors, but I'll talk to them, yeah? Hi, evening, gents. Uh, could I have the panel's views on the use of modern technology to assist match officials? And, and, and the referees, to be honest, I mean, I know they were great, you could laugh at them, you could have a joke with them, but nowadays they're so scared of having a laugh because they're going to report up in the stand and they want to get into Europe and all that and then referee and... I'll tell you a story, we played against, it was a, game, a midweek game last week, eh, last season, and the referee was actually, it was a good one for me, but it was, I was a wee bit jealous, he's actually putting fake tan on before a game, that's how vain he is. <laughs> and that's the truth. Unbelievable. He wanted to be the star of the show. And he's still hopeless. And he's one of our top referees. <laughs> we touched on it a bit earlier, but do you ever feel like chucking it when you attempt to get players but find you can't compete with the wages being offered in England? Even like so, 10 years ago. Many times. It's frustrating, you know, we go down to... Or, or, um, we go looking for players and, and you think you've seen one, well you have seen one, and then, uh, you know, the player wants to come. Every time we've had a player, and I've spoke to them, the only, they always want to come to Aberdeen. Great, a great reputation, and even the Scottish football will come. Plus we've got an airport, which sounds stupid, but it's very important for people coming for, for England or, or coming for abroad. And, um, the only thing that ever breaks down on would be finances. But normally we try and find it, is it within it, before we go and talk to them. But it is frustrating when you think, I've got somebody, and then some agent comes in and spoils everything, because it's very, very difficult nowadays to get a transfer deal. We, Willie and I, would uh, probably had much uh, earlier in May, everything was in place, and we're probably still needing one or two now. And it might be up to the to the end of the window, or sort of when, when it closes, that, that they come in, you know, with, with big teams in England decide what they're doing with some of their kids, like we've got a Luke Owen Walker, it's absolutely fabulous for us last year, that kind of quality coming in, younger players and, and maybe helping them. With uh, yeah. uh, all the squad available for selection, could you actually name your strongest at 11 to start the season? I could name a team, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you obviously know you talk right after the, the, the last game. Obviously, we'll know if it's Saturday, it's Saturday. In a strange sort of way, if, if you come back and it's on the bus, definitely, um, you're you're already picking your team for for the season, for the week afterwards. You know your opponents and all that kind of thing. Because I'm not one of these. It's, it would be great if you if you could pick the same team all the time. But we've got to look at what we form last year. I mean, even if we win now on Saturday, and, and that's what we expect them to do, models a different game altogether. And if they do well, then we might we might just go with the same team. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, we definitely do know our strongest team. Um, you know, whether there's, there's still a few wee niggles, to be honest, and there's still some no ready uh, to start again. But um, you know, we'll, we'll pick a team for Saturday with that in mind, and then uh, and then we'll take it for there and hopefully get a good start. But we know what the team's going to be. On that happy note, we'll draw the, the final whistle on, on the evening. Thank you very much for your attendance along here tonight. A couple of thank yous to do first. Obviously to Aberdeen Football Club for hosting the event for us tonight. And to thank them very much. Amy, and obviously the, the main thank you goes to our four panel members here for coming along and being open and frank with us tonight. On the far side there, Willie Miller. Here is Stuart McKimmy. <laughs> King Joy Harper. And of course, the man we're wishing all the best from Saturday onwards, Aberdeen manager Jimmy Calderwood.